Rode the bus for 45 minutes. She sucked me off. She was so fat I could <laughs> physically could not get the f <laughs> could not get to the f even in doggy. Her ass was just too big. Had to stand over her and do <laughs> anal. Okay, bro. What's up guys, Derek, MoPlaceMurderAids.com. Today we're going to be reacting to a Reddit post again that was brought to my attention almost a couple weeks ago at this point called Blasting and Cruising from the Age of 19, my personal experience with a variety of compounds. So much like this guy says at the beginning, his preface paragraph here about why he's like basically outing the dumb shit he did, it's a learning experience at the end of the day for everyone to see what he did, you know, what happened to him when he did it, how his body responded. And like a lot of times you can do a lot of theory, you can read a lot of shit, but at the end of the day, you don't really know what happens until you try it. So having anecdotal feedback from people in the community and people who've been through the ringer taking, you know, dumb cycles or, you know, good cycles too, is, uh, you know, very, very valuable in order to bring back and consolidate your own um, information from all the different sources you've kind of, you know, pulled info from over the years and kind of come to a educated conclusion on what may be the best approach for you. Because a lot of times people still have, you know, pre, uh, misconceptions about certain compounds, misconceptions about a lot of shit. And stories like this are always helpful to find out, you know, it's fucking idiotic to go about doing something that you could otherwise learn from somebody else's mistake, obviously, and then avoid it entirely. So anyways, he says here, hello, there is really no point in this post, but I want to share every PED I used and what happened. I know I will get a lot of flack, but I think it's good to share stories like this so people can learn and also someone might find it amusing. Please don't say shit like I didn't do any research. Yes, I did. I know more about gear than anyone else. I started researching gear at a way too young age, but here is a case of someone just not giving a fuck. It's also interesting for me to write this because it's a bit weird looking back at the shit you did and realizing how fucked up your justifications for different things were. I can definitely relate to that. I have a log on my phone with what I ran at what dosage and any notable things I noticed. I will basically be copying everything I wrote there. I am 182 centimeters if anyone is wondering so the weight can be put into perspective. The heaviest I was ever naturally was 97 kilograms, fat as shit. I moved in August 2019 from my hometown to be on my own. That summer I barely worked out and stopped eating regularly because I was binging coke and speed. Wow. September 20th, 2019 to December 4th, 2019. DN Dion, 120 milligrams for nine days, then 60 milligrams till I ran out. Um, if you guys have no idea what DN Dion is, it is, if I recall correctly, an orally active 19 nor testosterone derivative that was marketed um, in the supplement industry as a pro hormone over the counter. And then, you know, it subsequently got banned pretty quick, but it was, uh, you know, like one of the classic, like shitty pro hormones. Now, obviously some of the pro hormones were good, you know, like super drawl is actually like pretty fucking solid in some cases, but there was a lot of these like random analogs being thrown out there as, you know, legal supplements that were just, that were essentially just shelved pharmaceutical candidates that were you know, in development like fucking decades ago that got essentially trashed because they were seen as sub efficacious compounds for clinical application. So, you know, a lot of these supplement companies, you know, had chemists go into the um, pharmaceutical archives essentially and resurrect some of these like Frankenstein shitty compounds. And this is where a lot of the, uh, like the original use of this kind of strategy was to get around drug tests and, you know, Olympics and um, high level sports and actually it's still being done, but there's obviously, you know, push to actually get more novel agents that aren't just like Frankenstein shitty ones. But this is how, you know, some of the original um, conception around certain kind of like interesting, you know, new agents came about. They weren't necessarily new, rather they were abandoned pharmaceutical candidates. I would have ran a test if I could, but couldn't source it. So I ran this shitty pro hormone. I had extreme anxiety during the entire run and the pumps were horrendous and actually hindered my work performance. My job involves a lot of fiddling with equipment with tools and the forearm pumps were unbe unbearable. Body weight went from 86 kilograms to 93 kilograms. Very androgenic compound though. Rear delt popped like hell. Face was bloated like a hamster and coworkers were asking <laughs> what the fuck was wrong with me. My diet was complete dog shit. No money led me 
to eating cans of Pringles and frozen pizza. I would mix tuna fish with rice and eat it. Abusing the fuck out of protein powders, shitting my brains out several times a day. Classic. 25th of November 2019 to March 2020. The fuck? So this is, uh, oh, he's like started another compound in between his DNDO and run. EQ, 300 milligrams. I asked a drug dealer if he had tests. He said, yes, I meet this fucker and it's some shitty EQ. <laughs> well, fuck it. I had no other ways to source anything. I ran at 300 milligrams. For those who don't know, EQ isn't a drug you can use as a base. Correct. It doesn't convert to E2. So low E2 issues will appear. Let's well, not... <sighs> Like the common misconception about this, and by the way, if you haven't seen my, is equi equipoise or boldenone a aromatase inhibitor, go watch that video or read my article. It's one of the last big like mega posts I wrote out on my blog. Like I haven't wrote an article in a while now, but that one I spent a long fucking time on and it's one of my uh, better content heavy posts and it elaborates on the estrogenicity of EQ. Can it act as a test base? What kind of interactions does it have downstream with aromatase? Shit like that. And, um, you know, basically the summation of it is that EQ does not convert to bioidentical E2 as thought by, you know, Llewellyn in the classic uh, anabolics book. He suggested that it aromatizes at one half the rate of testosterone into bioidentical estradiol. In fact, it does aromatize into a synthetic estrogen analog as you would expect with a synthetic anabolic steroid, why the fuck would you think it converts to bioidentical E2 when the compound itself is not literally testosterone? You know, it's kind of, doesn't make sense. Like, especially if Dianabol, which is almost an equivalent drug essentially, but orally active, converts to 17-alpha-methyl-estradiol. Like, why the fuck would EQ convert to literal estradiol? It makes no sense whatsoever. So the actual estrogenic byproduct of EQ is very, very minimally estrogenic to the point that it can cause low E2 sides when used as a base. And when used concurrently with testosterone in a you know unison cycle, you can actually lower the estrogenic burden of the test quite significantly to a point where it's problematic just by having the EQ alongside it, which, you know, logically back in the day, we would have thought the two together are going to increase the estrogenicity because you have the con testosterone converting to E2 and then you have the EQ converting to, you know, E2 at half the rate so you have, you know, like all this E2 plus the half of the E2 equals more E2. That's what we would think. By the way, if you don't know what E2 is, it's estradiol. I realize sometimes I say these things and people are just like, what the fuck are you talking about? So E2 is estradiol. If you don't know what estradiol is, it is the major biologically active estrogen byproduct that your body creates through the aromatization of testosterone at the aromatase enzyme. So anyways, uh, but, but, uh, no money, can't Pringles, pizza, tuna fish, shitting himself. Where are we? Oh yeah, down here. I ran at 300 milligrams. Um, can't use it as a base, but to make clear, I had gone almost 12 weeks without estrogen, so I noticed no difference. EQ is weak as shit. My goal is honestly to maintain what I had and it did it. Horrible acne on my traps also somehow made my endurance worse. 25th November, December 17th, 2019. Dude, this is so much overlap. EQ being so slow to act and me being an impatient piece of shit, I ran Epi stain. Fuck, dude, this is quite the uh, overlapping run of just like random clusterfuck of compounds. And again, I guess it's uh, understandable to not uh, why he said, you know, don't... Uh, you know, don't judge me essentially because this guy, you know, is clearly acknowledging his shortcomings in his cycle design as he's become more educated. And he's doing this again to show us what not to do. So there's not really a point of doing anything but soaking up the information here and learning rather than being like, wow, you're an idiot for doing this. Cause like, even he knows that. So where, where, where are we here? We he ran epi stand at 60 milligrams a day. Body weight went up fast, went from 93 to 97. And it was extremely dry what I gained. Looked leaner than when I started. Strength gains were stupid. For chest, I was doing flat benches with the 40 kilogram dumbbells. And after three weeks, I was doing the same weight for reps with the bench on a 45% angle. Issues were that the pumps were so fucking bad I couldn't do bent over rows and the rage I had was unreal. At work, after a small disagreement, I smashed a toilet to pieces, literally seeing red at times. Whoever said epi stain was mild needs a bullet through their head. Really fucking energetic in my experience and I, my experience, more rage inducing than anything I had tried. All right, into 2020, 1st of January to January 28th, 28th okay so this guy is like bordering on gym closures here quad methyl extreme fuck dude browsing the shop i bought my 
pros from pro hormones i found this interesting product it was an oral with four types of pro hormones in one pill i think he's talking about the uh blackstone labs product actually maybe not because actually this doesn't look like the blackstone labs product at all 20 milligrams m sten 15 milligrams trendion 30 milligrams m1 aad 30 milligrams promignon curiosity got the best of me and it was also 50 percent. so of course i bought it 50% off, I'm assuming. I ran between one and two caps a day, depending on how bad my blood pressure was. Running this oral was interesting, to say the least. And by the way, for blood pressure, obviously a lot of this comes down to dietary intake, like how your diet is set up, electrolyte balance, getting enough potassium, magnesium, etc. But I think proactively, a lot of people would benefit from angiotensin receptor blockade during any cycle, you know, avoiding the morphological changes induced by taking gear using an ARB as well as active blood pressure management modulation with the ARB. It's kind of like a one, two punch that protects your heart, your kidneys, or at least attenuates the damage of the anabolics you're using. So it's definitely prudent to be using something in the uh, angiotensin receptor blocker class, in my opinion, during any exposure to anabolics. And my preference personally is telmisartan, but obviously that is something to determine with your doctor and something to that is based on how bad your blood pressure is. You know, telmisartan is not the go-to for every single person. You know, what I prefer for my personal situation. And I'm literally only on TRT. I just do it for trying to be as cautious as possible. And if I was running heavy shit, I definitely would be using a higher dose and or potentially using another ARB entirely if it was warranted. Running this oral was interesting to say the least. My body weight went from 98 kilograms to 108 kilograms within two weeks, not lean by any imagination, dropped down to 103 a couple days of finish. After finishing it, a fuck ton of water and glycogen. I got stretch marks on my shoulders, lats, quads, and one small stretch mark on my forearm even. Strength gains were stupid. Some of the side effects were blood pressure so high I got nosebleeds bending over. Classic low blood sugar, ankles were almost as thick as my calves, and lethargy so bad I passed out at work several times. Wow. Don't know if it was related, but had coughing fits so bad at the end, chunks of coagulated blood would come up. My theory is that my blood pressure was so high I was bursting blood vessels around my lungs or something. Fuck, dude. February 8th to February 21st. M1 AD 60 milligrams. Not learning the lesson I ran this rat poison. <laughs> I've never felt so shit in my life. I vomited a lot and my sweat had this weird ammonium smell to it. I would have... I would also have the weirdest fucking dreams on it. I would wake up one to two before work feeling like I had a hangover and I would drift in and out of conscious lying in my bed dreaming and not dreaming. And let me tell you that some of those dreams were fucked up. Nothing to note strength wise as I wasn't able to push myself in the gym as I felt so dog shit. It was also extremely angry. This anger was, though was different from the explosive epi stain anger. It was more of the trend below coldness of ignoring coworkers I disdain imagining brutal shit and general poor me attitude the few days i was on this rat poison my arms grew by 0.3 to 0.5 inches few days okay my traps popped like hell saw a reflection of me in a window at work and i thought what the fuck is wrong with my traps of course just glycogen and lost everything after a couple days of quitting february 24th to 26th of march 2020 sustenon 350 milligrams a week finally fucking able to source test after one and a half weeks, it started kicking in and I already felt a hundred times better. Literally just in time for the you know what. I actually was interested in girls and my sleep improved. Acne got less worse. Had some de pretty decent strength gains once it kicked in. Also, my body composition also changed. I think going without E2 so long had made me very insulin resistant. March 13th to June 15th. Trenbolone and Anthe, 200 milligrams a week. 800 milligrams the last two shots just so I could finish the vials. Sorry, by the way, I do not recommend you fucking do this. I did this before. Horrible idea. Started using Tren here because I was going to cut and the gyms were closed. Tren was used for cattle so they don't lose mass, being transported to the slaughterhouse, and it was used in France on bedridden cancer patients in the 80s. So this was my justification for using it. Body weight was around 105 kilograms here. I was extremely horny throughout the experience. I had to wax my carrot three to five times a day and I was turned on by the ugliest chicks. I spent a weekend at a single mom that smoked inside and was probably 120 kilograms. Trenbolone also made me love evil. I have no word for it, but Trenbolone gave me a sort of coldness and apathy towards everyone. Was a dick to everyone and in my head, no one could do shit because I am 100, I, because I am 40 pounds heavier than the next guy. I was never super aggressive on it. Epi stain was more the 
was more the arg smash everything in sight rage. Trend was more mulling and hold grudges. I really, really cleaned up my diet here though, which is something I should have done before I started blasting. March 26th to June 15th, test E 150 milligrams a week. I dropped my test dose as a precaution and switched to anethate. Ananthate. I couldn't source AIs and I was scared of getting gyno. Trenbolone makes tests more estrogenic and I had just started finasteride, which indirectly increases estrogen. April 20th to May 24th, clenbuterol 40 to 120 micrograms a day and suicide diet. What the fuck is that? Got super motivated on a molly and acid trip to get shredded. So suicide dieted here. I'm assuming that's aggressive cutting of your calories. Started my cut at 105 kilograms. April 20th, I was around 99 kilograms. By May the 24th, I was 92 kilograms. I had low expectations for Clen after reading reports, but Jesus, it did wonders for me. I got a strength boost on it. Um, this is like the adrenaline component of it. This is something that can make you stronger and it does in fact um, induce mTOR phosphorylation. And through this mechanism that can obviously increase fat loss, you know, by literally increasing your heart rate and energy expenditure. Um, but in addition to that, it can actually have an anabolic or anti-catabolic effect. And in women, it's pretty fucking potent at building muscle. Negatives was sweating like a pig. And at times I literally felt like I was going to, I was getting a heart attack. Felt like someone was pressing on my chest outwards from where my heart is. 5th of May to August 22nd, epi stain 20 to 30 milligrams. Wow, this guy's running like all the fucking pro hormones under the sun. The government had a press conference and it was clear the gyms would open soon. So I justified using epi stain for four weeks before the gyms opened to give myself an, an, an edge. <laughs> an edge on all the other gym rats, you know? I felt so good mentally on epi stain, I couldn't stop. So that's why I ran it so fucking long. 30, 60 milligrams of epi stain had me seeing red. The 20 to 30 dose made me calm and level headed. During the entire summer, I was just maintaining calorie wise and my progress went to shit. Going to be honest here, I was more focused on partying and taking drugs in the gym. I will also note during the entire summer, I was dropping 200 milligrams of Anadrol once or twice weekly pre-workout. Jesus fuck, dude. Instant strength boost from, could notice blood pressure rise from taking power in a pill, literally, especially at the end of the workout and I was doing the fluff and puff shit. The days I was dropping A-bombs, I was able to strict curl the 27.5 kilogram dumbbells after a back workout. Usually I can barely muster the 17.5 to 20 kilogram dumbbells. Doing the entire stack with a plate on the knob on tricep pushdowns, etc. My hair was getting raped hard <laughs> here during the summer. Was it the epicene or the anadrol? I like to think the anadrol was the culprit, even though I was just taking it twice a week. Yeah, but you're taking 200 milligrams twice a week, bro. Like that is 400 milligrams a week divided by seven. Like you might as well be taking, um, like I guess it's in and out of your system, but you still have to consider the half-life, the actual drug exposure. And there's like a threshold amount of androgenicity that's going to, you know, expedite hair loss too. Um, it's not just like, it, cause it's in and out of your system. It's not going to fuck you up. This it's going to have lingering energetic effects and your body is going to get uh, any kind of hormonal fluctuations in general can cause telogen effluvium, but above and beyond that, any kind of the compound that is tissue selective is going to lose tissue selectivity above a certain dosage. So this is where the intent, the logic of using smaller, more reasonable doses of multiple different vectors layered on top of each other makes a lot more sense than really aggressively driving one androgen into the sky. You know what I mean? So yeah, the tissue selectivity of anadrol is not very high at 200 milligrams a day, obviously. It's not, you know, you're going to get crazy uh, strength outcomes, I guess, from the um, adrenergic signaling and whatnot. But the... Uh, the actual hypertrophy and real like muscle growth you're getting out of it is it really worth it for uh you know like you probably didn't even need that you don't need that much to get the same strength outcomes probably in my opinion too uh but yeah the hair i would imagine both contribute but the anadrol dev at this dosage definitely didn't help june 15th to september 28th testo e 300 milligrams up to my test dose as the trend was leaving my system got a lot of acne so my e2 was probably high I was shooting once a week, thought which would, though, which compounded the issue. August 1st to August 28th. And dude, did you even take a break? Like, how is this blasting and cruising? This is like, this is just, this is like a year long blast from what I've seen so far. Uh, where the fuck am I? Anavar 25 milligrams for two weeks and 37.5 milligrams for two weeks. Nothing really to note. Anavar didn't do shit for me. Good thing was it pulled a lot of water from my midsection and my muscles looked really full when pumped. The epi stand completely overshadowed shadowed it though. Shin pumps were horrible. Me and my friend were taking a short cut to get to another friend 
Oh, why did I say that so weird? Me and a friend were taking a shortcut to get to another friend and we had to walk through a demolition site with a lot of uneven steps. I had to stop every 10 to 20 meters and wait for these shin pumps to stop. It reminds me of when I used to drive around back in the day on too high of a dose of D-ball and I have to literally pull over, recline my chair back so I could hyperextend my back, fix my back pumps, and then go back to, <laughs> go back to driving. If you work in food delivery or as a mailman, Anavar isn't the drug for you. September 28th, oh dude, if you're like an Uber driver or you're a food delivery or whatever, and you take D-ball, you're gonna get fucked, dude. You won't even be able to do your job. September 28th to December 7th, Task Probe, 187 milligrams, weeks one to six, kickstart. M1AD, 20 milligrams, weeks one to three. m Sten 20 milligrams, weeks three to seven. Test D, 450 milligrams throughout. Body weight was 89 kilograms here when I started. Within six weeks, I was 101 kilograms. Got accused of being on gear by everyone. Physically, I felt fine, even on stupid amounts of orals. Test does a lot to mitigate side effects. December 7th to January 7th, presumably of 2021. Test E, 240 milligrams. Now it was time to <laughs> now it was time to cruise, or at least I thought. December 16th to January 3rd, M Sten, 10 milligrams. Some dude at work said I <laughs> looked smaller. And it hit my self-esteem, so I added an M Sten again. January 3rd to January 25th, M1A D dose between 5 to 10 milligrams. Ran out of M Sten, so I took the 20 milligram caps of M1A D and poured the powder out and split the caps into three. Got impatient, so only split them into two. No idea of dosage. Body weight was a stable 102 to 104 kilograms. Somewhat lean with my first two vis abs visible unflexed. February 4th to 18th, Trendion, 60 milligrams, Superdrol, 20 milligrams. I had no fucking idea why I did this. I could actually feel my liver. I was thirsty all the time and no one, and one evening shift at work, I peed, <laughs> peed blood. Not a couple drops, a thick stream of blood, so I quit. The few days I was on this stack, all my muscles became blocky and almost square-like. Strong shit. Would like to run Superdrol again. Just have to wait for my liver to cool down. That sounds good. February, February 25th to present days. Test eating 390 milligrams a week. Novo Rapid 5 to 20 I use a day. Insulin surprised me in how effective it was at adding weight. My muscles instantly look fuller and my recovery is stupid good now. I will work out legs and pin insulin and I can feel my quads getting pumped up. Opposed to most people, I've designed my insulin protocol around my diet instead of doing the classic bodybuilding arbitrary 10 grams of carbs for every IU of slin or whatever people do nowadays. Yeah, that's obviously the way. I, mean, I think a lot more people are coming around to realize that that is the way to work this into your system, into your protocol. It's not something that is designed to... Uh, it's not something you should be layering more food on top of in order to fit your insulin doses. Rather, it is about driving the nutrients of your current diet model in a more optimal basis um, and getting more nutrient uptake, essentially. Like that's the whole goal of it and going above and beyond that by spilling over and adding unnecessary amounts of carbs because you want to use an arbitrary dosage of insulin when you've basically not worked it around what you were already eating. Like it's just a recipe to get fat when you just end up having ridiculously massive Vitargo shakes with hydrolyzed whey and shit in them with a bunch of fucking, a mishmash of dumb shit during your workout. Oh, I need my, my giant fucking 100 gram carb, you know, Vitargo shake with two scoops of hydrolyzed whey with my glutamine, with my creatine, with my fucking whatever. And you have it all in this giant goddamn thing that's gonna sit in your stomach during your workout. It's not a good, not a good strategy. I don't know if I have cracked some code or something, but insulin is actually making me leaner. I've never gone hypo, and the only side effect is I pee a lot at night. Insulin is also fairly, also it's fairly safe. People think you will drop dead if you miscalculate your dose. Well, naturally, when your blood sugar drops, your beta cell signal the pancreas to reduce releases to releases glucagon, which is the opposite of insulin. A type one diabetic can die from too much insulin because their beta cells aren't active. If you have an all right pancreas, it's not instant death like GH15 makes it out to be. Obviously we know GH15 posts are not the most credible, so there's that. Well, this is my summary of everything I've ran. Quality shit post. Edit, should probably add why I do with this shit. It's honestly very simple. I get a lot of attention and respect which strokes my ego. Growing up as a cringy Aspie, with low self-esteem, blasting year has done wonders for my social life. It's a sort of euphoria. I've abused drugs a lot and I consider myself a poly, a poly addict. Getting bigger is my addiction and blasting gear facilitates this. Also, it gives a sort of drive. I want to go out and do shit, explore, have fun, etc. I never had this before. Damn, dude. Uh, let's see. Blasting cruising from the age of 19. Where was the cruising part? Yeah, exactly. This was just self-sabotaging blast after blast. After reading everything, I'd assume this was your... 
<laughs> What's your safest cycle is binging coke and speed. You are nuts. Would like more details on fucking that mom. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but this looks like a video in itself. Jesus. Um, actually, fuck, maybe I should. Well, since you asked, I was extremely horny on trend and it would not subside even if I jacked off. Also, every girl was suddenly a 10. If there was a fat girl, I would find shit like her eye, hair or eyes sexy. Basically, I was on Tinder and bad dude and meeting up with everyone I came in contact with. Matched with this 26-year-old chick, which I, who I spoke briefly with. She brought up sex almost immediately. Rode the bus for 45 minutes. She sucked me off. She was so fat, I could <laughs> physically could not get the pussy. <laughs> could not get to the pussy. Even in doggy, her ass was just too big. Had to stand over her and do <laughs> anal? Okay, bro. Trend made it impossible to come. You literally meet a chick. Uh, okay, I guess if she's this quality, then maybe she will do anal immediately. But I mean, fuck, dude. Um, had <laughs> Uh, trend made it impossible to come and she got tired, started to suck me and she got tired of sucking me and right after she lets go, I come all over her hair. I loved every second of it. Also, another point, I don't know if girls can smell tremble but I literally felt them coming on when I was on, when I was trend. What? I literally felt them coming on when I was trend. When I was literally fucking this physical embodiment of tremble. I was getting dates left and right. I was also so horny. I was acting creepy around women and I felt like a rapist. I would flirt and act nice around these three to fives and go on dates, build their trust just to fuck them. Also trend made me fall in love very easily. I asked on girl if she wanted to marry me after being with her three to four, three or four times, creeped her the fuck out. Tremble is similar to amphetamine in how it makes you love sex and evil. For several weeks, my entire life was wake up, go to work, and to my supervisor's dismay, I would spend all my time on various apps trying to hook up after work. I worked out and then meeting what I thought was goddesses at them time. I am ranting a bit now, but Trend Blown also made me very cold towards everyone and a huge dick. I work in a manufacturing plant with roughly 200 workers and tons of contractors at work. I could not be bothered to do a shit. Like I got the Apprentice of the Year award around Christmas time, so a lot of relationships at work got strained. My work also has several people who are from the social security system who are on workers training, basically forced to work against their will for scraps of money so they can still receive government money. I pretty much forced them to uh, do all the work for me. A guy at my work is called Kent. I would call him cunt, <laughs> trying to fuck with him. He commented on it and I said, it's just my accent. <laughs> A tiny Asian woman at my work giggles all the time. She giggled when I was talking with her and I knew it's just a quirk she has, but I looked at her like a psycho, asked why you were laughing. What the fuck? Why is this part quoted? Asked, okay. And flared my arms and walked up to her. The horror on her face. Also, there were some contract contractors on, in the plant with a lift that had flashing lights on it, which they legally need to do OSHA, O-S-H-A, I don't know. The two guys were pretty young and I walked up to them and told them you need to turn off the light right fucking now. It causes light pollution and it affects the sensor, blah, 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 which in turn fucks the system, blah, blah. Basically, I was just talking shit. They believed me and then I went up and wrote a deviation report about contractors not using the warning lights on the lifts. Also at a house party, I got the honor of cooking the frozen pizzas. You know how there is always a puddle of oil on the pepperonis? Well, I took a piece of tissue and sucked up the oil and poured castor oil on them. If you don't know, castor oil makes you shit your brains out. Well, it depends on how much you take. I got a free one week training at a very posh gym in a richer part of town, like a gym where all the plates are colorful and coated in rubber, a fuck ton of TV screens, no yelling, no chalk, you have to wipe the sweat off, etc. Seeing all these snobs there with their expensive workout gear pissed me off. I grew up relatively poor and have learned to disdain saucer as well call them here um in the locker room i took the car keys of a porsche and phone of a random guy and chucked them into the nearby river i would suddenly diss my friends or whoever i was hanging out with targeting their insecurities really autistic behavior looking back and i deserve a severe beating for all that shit. there's no responses to that holy fuck that was better than the uh the breakdown of the compounds um so anyways obviously uh well this guy's like young as fuck i guess still so he is He's like uh, 21 now, almost, or he's 21. So obviously uh, it's kind of interesting because even at the end, I was expecting like intelligently designed <laughs> cycles and like this guy had educated himself throughout the time. But at the end, he's running. He's still running like the most liver toxic fucking oral compounds ever and combining them concurrently. And this is like literally a couple months ago.
So yeah, well, I guess this is like a reasonable run, but I mean, every other run prior to that was like pretty fucking organ toxic. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This was an interesting one with some, uh, the fat chick anal part had me fucking laughing. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplatesmoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workup formulas that design myself from scratch, my recommended lab tests and diagnostics to stay on top of your health, especially if you are somebody doing shit like this. You should definitely be staying on top of your health very frequently with frequent blood tests and yearly imaging, or at least, you know, every couple of years in my opinion. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.